in the final lecture of the course, we are going to look into uh, providing cellular connectivity for IoT devices. So let's first uh, start to talk about 2G. So why, why is 2G still relevant and often used for providing uh, internet connectivity to IoT devices in many parts of the world? And the reason is that it employs a very simple modula uh, mo modulation scheme of GMSK, uh, which makes it easily applicable on resource constrained IoT devices. Furthermore, 2G is still much cheaper than other wireless uh, uh, standards in terms of the subscription costs uh, from the network service provider. Finally, it is also very low power. Uh, and of course, uh, for some specific uh, use cases uh, that uh, it sort of like uh, works very well, where you are sort of like transmitting infrequent events, it makes sense to be able to use it on 2G. Hence, while 2G is being phased out from uh, many parts of the world, it you would find that 2G is still very much used to provide connectivity to IoT devices. However, we are now replacing 2G with a newer standard, which is called LTE, and it's part of 4G and uh, 5G. And LTE can be divided into different categories, such as CAT0, uh, uh, CAT M1, and CAT NB1. And these are designed to support uh, uh, traffic for IoT applications. For example, uh, LTE CAT0 is a traditional LTE, but focused on really low-end devices. Then we have LTE CAT M1, which has supports uplink of 375 kilobits per second and 300 kilobits downlink. So again, it's an example of uh, uh, wireless standards that has asymmetric capability because uh, typically for IoT devices, the connectivity pattern is from the device to the edge device or the cellular base station in this case. And LTEM supports reduced transmit power and uh, reduced bandwidth to be able to cater to IoT devices uh, constraints. And then we have a, a narrowband IoT, which is also called LTE CAT NB1. It supports 65 kbps of uplink and 26 kbps of downlink, and it has even lower bandwidth uh, usage compared to the LTE CAT M1, and it supports greatly increased range. So we'll look into the uh, M1 and NB1 uh, over the next few slides. But uh, let's first look at why do we need a special category of uh, protocols for IoT devices. So IoT devices, as we know, are much low power devices when we compare it to devices such as cellular uh, or mobile phones. And they have a long period of inactivity or low power. So the, most of the IoT devices we have seen throughout the course, their duty cycle remain in a low power sleep state, and then they wake up to perform some sensing task and perform wireless communication. So the characteristics of these devices are very different compared to mobile phone. And uh, so if we sort of like support this new category of IoT devices, it is it makes it easier for the network providers to sort of like uh, think about supporting these devices uh, uh, in the, within their network. And and they could then design the network accordingly. And, and that's the reason why we need a special category of uh, protocols to be able to support uh, cellular connectivity on IoT devices. Consequently, the if you look at the timeline of these standards, uh, in many respects, both the LTEM and narrowband IoT were developed in parallel with various releases uh, from, from coming from LTE uh, from, uh, as part of the different releases uh, uh, from LTE. So how does the multiple access method and the modulation scheme look for LTEM and uh, narrowband IoT? So uh, these standards support OFDMA based downlink, that is communication from cellular uh, towers to the IoT devices. So uh, it uses OFDMA and this, um, the reason is that the cellular towers can have very sophisticated modulators uh, to be able to transfer o OFDMA signals and hence they uh, it supports a more complex modulation scheme. On the other hand, from the transmission from the devices to the cellular tower typically uses single carrier FDMA mechanism. And it is much simpler multiple access method for IoT devices to implement. So what is single carrier FDMA? It has many blocks of subchannels that are combined into one transmission or signal from the device to the cellular tower. So how does the resource allocation or, 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 or how so how does the resource and multiple access allocation look like? So the cellular networks use OFDMA to schedule various transmissions. So the frequency and time are are divided into many sub blocks, and these sub blocks, as we show on the slide, are called resource blocks. And the number of the resource block allocated to a particular device controls the bandwidth usage and also the uh, amount of uh, sort of like spectrum that is allocated to the device. So different devices can have a very different amount of spectrum that is allocated based on the different traffic pattern that they support. 
So at a nutshell, the basic unit is the resource block. And for example, if you have a multimedia rich uh, application like IoT devices trying to, uh, that is uh, looking at uh, uh, collecting vision or uh, data from camera, you would want to use more resource block because it's bandwidth rich. So how does the resource allocation for LTEM and uh, narrowband IoT look like? So LTEM supports higher data rate than narrowband IoT and uses six resource blocks. So this corresponds to about 1.4 megahertz of bandwidth and this traffic of LTEM can easily coexist with other normal LTE traffic that like from your mobile phone to the cellular uh, tower. And this sort of like scheduling is done by the cellular tower to make sure that the traffic from uh, uh, your IoT device doesn't interfere or doesn't sort of like get impacted by the cellular traffic. However, one thing you should note is that typically the these standards where uh, they limit the capabilities of LTE because the IoT devices are very constrained and they don't require all the capabilities that LTE offers. So typically you are only supporting a subset of the capabilities that the LTE provides uh, for these IoT devices. On the other hand, now if we talk about the most constrained uh, implementation, uh, which is narrowband IoT, it is designed for supporting very low data rate and bandwidth, and it only uses one resource block. And this leads to the bandwidth of 200 kilohertz, and it owns, uh, it leads to a very narrow bandwidth uh, of the signal. And, uh, and we have actually multiple ways that this uh, narrowband IoT signal could actually uh, 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 operate so it can be actually present in ba in band that means with the regular traffic it could be present in similar frequency band or typically if you look at most wireless communication it has something like guard band between channels so you could have these narrowband iot in the guard band or you could also have them clustered together to be uh, supporting uplink transmission for multiple devices or the same device so there are multiple ways that this uh, transmission can occur uh, in the world Finally, what are the other adaptations uh, that are made uh, in these standards to support IoT devices? Firstly, they reduce the transmit power to the maximum of 20 dBm. And this is, of course, uh, quite obvious so that you use as little energy as possible on the device. And it also takes advantage of the fact that the cellular towers are a power devices. They are very powerful and they, they can support higher sensitivity. So you could have your transmit, uh, uh, transmitter uh, or IoT device transmit at a lower power and yet be able to support a sufficient range to reach the nearby cellular tower. Secondly, these uh, devices also support something called extended discontinuous reception. What it means is that it allows these devices to stay on network while they are low power duty cycling. And uh, uh, the cell towers then hold the message for these devices. Due to these optimization, what we find is that they, these devices that are using a narrow, uh, narrowband IoT or LTEM can support very high, uh, 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 they can support a significant lifespan. That means when your batteries need to be replaced. As an example, if a device transmits data only once a day and wakes up every 10 minutes to check for commands from the cellular base station, it would last about 4.7 years on a two AA size batteries or pencil batteries. For uh, there are also further power saving modes where the devices can be totally turned off and they yet remain connected to the cellular base station. These devices could then be sleeping for a few minutes to a few days. And these devices would then basically notify the tower that they want to go to sleep and then the, and listen for packets uh, for trans, uh, after they perform transmission for after a short window after the transmission has occurred. And all of this allows you to have significant power saving and allow these devices to last long time on a battery while using cellular band for connectivity. So uh, if we compare the link budget, which is a common parameter that is used to look at uh, uh, the uh, communication uh, link and the capabilities of IoT devices, uh, LTEM supports up to 160 dB of link budget, narrowband IoT 164 dBm. And uh, surprisingly, it operates at the higher frequency band, typically at like uh, like 1900, giga, uh, 1900 mega, megahertz. And... Uh, and even though it has a high, uh, 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 it, it can in some cases be a higher link budget and uh, data rate compared to things like uh, Sigfox and LoRaWAN. And the reason is that the uh, cellular towers are much more capable. It's using a more complex modulation scheme. And uh, uh, all of this sort of like allows it to be able to support uh, higher uh, data rate uh, uh, at may, in some respects, similar power consumption as for example, LoRa. And uh, the best thing is that now many of these microcontroller and other boards uh, that you can buy off the shelf actually have cellular connectivity built in. You just get a SIM card, get subscription from a network provider, and you could actually have your IoT devices and deployments be able to support uh, cellular connectivity. 
So this, uh, of course, allows these devices to be, uh, or uh, this uh, cellular networks to be sort of like used in more and more devices that are being deployed. And with this, we come to an end of uh, this course and the lecture. Thank you very much.